Hello, this is Kurokami, and I'm back for part two of the How to Use the G-Pen series. Okay, so in the last part I told you all the different materials, and I showed you some examples and such. But now is to actually like dive into actually using the G-Pen on the work. So first off, like I said, roll up your sleeves because you do not want to smear any of ink and make a huge mess. So, um, before you even start ever inking one of your pictures, like I said, you want the scrap paper so that you can mess with the ink to see how, how it's feeling on the, on the actual nib before you put it on your work so you know what you're dealing with and you get a feel. So, first what we're going to do is simply open up the uh, ink. And it can be very messy, so pre always prepare to have ink all over your hands because it's almost unavoidable unless you're like a freaking pro or whatnot. So, we're going to take off the little nib right or the little case. And you can pre pretty much just make it to where the nib can touch the bottom of the ink. You, you don't want to have too much ink when they're like, that's actually uh, a lot of ink. So... And um, if you ever have any access, you can always just wipe it off the side. So I actually know you can keep that on. So uh, first, we're just gonna, you know, just do some basic lines. So just gonna feel okay. So obviously, you make really thin lines or you can make really thick lines. It really depends on, on how much you press down. This is why Mangaka very much enjoy the G-Pen is because there's so much control versus your little micron pens that uh, that are set actual like sizes. So the G-Pen is very versatile. So uh, you can do all kinds of interesting shapes, you know, like, you know, your curves and you can do cross hatching. All kinds of things. Um, I'm not very versatile with cross hatching and shading yet with the G Pen because I'm still pretty new with it. But uh, yeah, I've, mo I've mostly used it just to ink things. And you can even do like, you know, like you can do like fur patterns, which is like pretty cool. There's is endless possibilities of what you can do with the G Pen, and like to uh, to avoid things like that a lot. Make sure you're never pushing against yourself because you're not only going to scratch the paper, but if you have a lot of ink on your pen, sometimes it can blotch like this and you definitely don't want that. So always make sure that it's coming towards you, always towards you and that the top part is always up. You never want to go like upside down. See, it, not only is it not going to come out, it's the same thing. You always want to make sure it's hooking like a talon of a bird. So, uh, pretty much I think that's going to be uh, it on just the practice. So every time you dip it in, you always want to mess with the, the scrap paper just to make sure that your lines are good. So, we can actually get into the beef of this video. So, put that out of the way. So, right here. So, I'm going to pretty much uh, start by just basically inking this. It's not supposed to be a really beautiful job or anything, but, uh, you know, it's just just going to be for practice and to show you an actual, you know, work in progress. So, what I said, again, is since I'm mostly right-handed, I want to start up in, at this side in the left upper-hand corner and work myself kind of diagonally down. So that, that means I'm going to probably start with this bun of hair on the top. So uh, pretty much just here it goes. So and again, this isn't supposed to be perfect or anything, but just a practice. Yeah, yeah, so, and, uh, yeah, it can be very fun, but you gotta really be careful, because there's so many ways of making mistakes with using the G-Pen, that, you know, and you typically, 
if you can avoid it, you don't want to just do it like short segments. You want it to be one swoop because your line can be a lot cleaner and not and not like just fragments. It kind of like what I did up at the top. It's, it's honestly been a little while since I've used my G pen, just for the fact that uh. I've mostly been uh, like from uh, since I'm a mangaka myself. I've been working on uh, on that, and I haven't been to the inking stage recently. And pretty much uh, recently, I've been working on scenery. So in my sketchbook, um, I might show you in a different video of some of that scenery that I have done. But uh, yeah, this uh, can feel really nice and. You know, you hear the scratch of the nib on the paper, and if I, I don't know if I'm sounding weird or not, but you know, it's it's just really cool, and it feels, in a sense, more artistic than even uh, use using a regular pen, because again, you can start with a very thick line, and by the time you let your pen off the paper, it, you can make it really thin, so you can go thick to thin in one line. Which is actually really interesting, and that's another thing is uh, if you ever start to see that your uh, ink is getting dull, which I think that's happening right now, you just want to do another another uh, dib in your ink. And again, uh, since I'm doing that, before I go onto the paper again, I want to just do a couple lines, just a couple lines, just to make sure that's going good. So that's looking good. That's all you have to do, just a couple lines. Because, you know, if it blotches and falls out, it's better to be on the scrap paper than it is to be on your actual finished piece. So normally I would go all the way across the bangs and, you know, finish that. But uh, since we're working, you know, diagonal down, I want to, you know, maybe start working on this eyebrow, this part of the eye. And then possibly some of these uh, bangs right here. Not bangs, but other strands of hair, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. So, let's uh, get some of this out of the way. Actually, this is going to be a little bit challenging. So. And for the sake of learning, I said, always make sure that the pen comes towards you. But if you're confident that you can do a fine job going away from you every so often... You can, but um, it's just it's just a little risky, and it's something you don't want to do if you don't have to. Okay, and now I'm going to do this eye. <laughs> the eyes are always the most stressful part of inking for me because that's the center of the face. When you look at a drawing, that's the first thing you look at. So you always just want to uh, be very careful because if you mess up, that which is the focal point essentially of your drawing you almost kind of ruin the drawing and that is definitely something that you do not want to do sorry I keep checking up at the camera to make sure that it's actually in the frame because I don't want to be like working on this and then look back later and it wasn't in the frame at all because that would not be good Come on, now this ink's in the way. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So now I have the whole... I mean, I got way too much stuff in the way. So now I got the actual eyelid done, the top part. So now with the actual like shading in the eyelid, there's two ways that you can do this. You can, of course, use the ink. Or you can uh, later on do it with your micron pen. Or if you do digital art, you can just scan this in and then digitally add the black in there just to save ink. But for me, I'm not much of a digital person. I have some experience, but I, I'd rather just, you know, just do it right here now with the uh, actual ink. So here we go. I know, and I actually just woke up not too long ago, even though it's... uh past noon because I was up pretty late last night but it's so good I always love drawing it's a very uh very satisfactory and can be very soothing as long as you are uh 
doing a good job. You know, if, if you're not having a good day, that's definitely not going to help your drawing. And you, 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 the last thing you want to do is be extremely stressed when you're drawing. That's not the point of drawing. The point of drawing is to have fun and, uh, you know, really enjoy yourself. You know, so if you're not having fun or if you're not getting the result that you want, you know, sometimes it just helps just uh, go away for a couple minutes. You know, just like do something else, watch an anime, listen to music. And that's what I like to do a lot while I'm drawing. I like to actually listen to music or watch other YouTube videos. But obviously I'm not going to do that in this video because I don't want any copyright issues. You know. But, uh, yeah, so... Um, now that I have this eye done, I mean, I could always do the pupil right now, but, you know, this, again, is just supposed to be a basic video. So, now that I have that part done, uh, maybe I'll start doing some of these strands right here. So, let's make sure we're on focus. Start up. And see what I'm trying to do, one stroke. And it's not exactly touching right there. And, and it's going pretty good. That's what I like to see. Bam. Yeah, it's actually doing not so bad. <laughs> Which is always what I like to see. Brilliant. Yeah, that's one thing I don't want to not be talking because then the video will get just a little bit boring. But anyway, so yep, now we kind of have that basically done. And there's like one more strand. Now I kind of messed up. I kind of should have done this strand first before this. But my hand can comfortably still hit this line. So I'm still okay. So let's uh start with this. I don't even know if you can see the pencil lines very well in there. Alright, now see, I ran out of ink midway. That's something you really don't want to happen. But it's not the end of the world. So, of course, I'm going to dip again. Mess with my paper. Just a couple strands. And we're good again. It's pretty, um, rinse and repeat. Like, when it comes to this, uh, just drawing with the nib. So that's why I wasn't going to be inking anything like super amazing. Now see that's when I actually went away because I felt comfortable. Now I did mess up a little bit right here. So I can just kind of fill that in and you know, you can always make the lines thicker around it to make it better, but again, I'm not going to worry too much about that on this particular drawing. So, and then we have her shoulder. And now, now that we're done all of this part, we're going to move back over towards the actual uh, rest. Oh wow, this one's actually pretty long. Okay, so let's hurry this up to make sure that this isn't like a 50 minute video. So I'm going to pretty much uh, shut up right now and I'm just going to focus on the drawing just to make sure I can get this done very fast. So uh, pretty much just sit back and relax while I finish this drawing and make sure I'm on camera the whole time. I want to add a quick mess up. Look, right here, I actually touched. So that's actually really bad. So like if this was actually a uh, a drawing thing I cared about, which I don't, it, uh, yeah, it would be very unfortunate. 
but since this is only a little practice, it's not that uh, end of the world ish. But yeah, just you always gotta be careful. And I would recommend. I know I said I was gonna shut up. I can I just found some more shit to actually talk about. And uh, you really want to practice your skill with inking before you work on anything like even though you, like, you just want to be good really fast and you're like I don't want to waste my time practicing on on stupid shit I just want to ink like finished pieces J just don't do that because when you mess up you're gonna really bite yourself in the butt because you're like wow I just messed up this really good drawing with ink because I'm not very experienced with ink but I just wanted to hop into it like that, that's why mo most of my first starts I just did recreations of other artwork like of like characters from shows like I kind of showed you because those aren't I mean yes they're my own drawings but they're not my own ideas so even if I mess them up it, it's just practice that's why uh, I like I'm working on this manga right now I didn't just start inking the manga you know, like right off the bat, no, I needed to get that practice in. And if I didn't get that practice in, I, you know, would have some of the mistakes I've already made, but on my finished piece, which I would not enjoy at all. Okay, I'm running out of ink again. Let's see if I can at least finish this. Nope. Dab it. Do a couple marks and we're good again. So yeah, it kind of depends on how hard you press and uh, that how long your ink's gonna last you. Like if you if you're doing a bunch of like small lines, your ink might last you quite a while. But if you're doing a uh, if you're doing a uh, very heavy heavy drawing, see. <laughs> It's so funny. Look what I just did. And I'm very happy I'm doing this. I'm happy I'm making these mistakes so that you don't make these mistakes. I was talking to you and I flung my brush, my nib, just a little bit and see it blotched. I did have that happen to one of my drawings before, but I actually turned it into like blood splatters. So it seemed like a little less obvious. And now actually that um might be in my way. <laughs> Oh well. So yeah. So again, that that's why I can't reinforce enough that you want to be like very careful with inking because there's just with the nib at least it's just so easy to mess up in so many different ways. But it's very rewarding. I don't want to turn anyone off of inking with a nib just because there's so many ways to mess up. Inking in general, even if you're using just a uh, a regular micron pen or ballpoint pen, you can still mess up because th those are permanent mediums. Like if you mess up with them, you know, your drawing is how it is unless you can find a creative way to actually uh, make up for it. But uh, other than that, you know, you don't, want to actually uh use it but uh yeah so uh it's very nice and if and it's you know i didn't do it for the longest of time and you know it's not it's not no scary monster you know a lot of people are afraid just because like they said you know it's it's very difficult but don't think about that you know practice makes perfect and i'm nowhere near of like an amazing artist but, you know, I keep working and trying every day just to get a little bit better, you know. So just hang tight and it will eventually come to you. You know, you might not be like ever like a professional mangaka artist, but you at least get to a point where you're a really good artist. Because especially being a mangaka, it's not just about the art, you know, it's about the story as well. Granted, a lot of manga out there, there's, you know, the art's done by this author and the, you know, art and the story's done by the other. So you can fall into stuff like that, but for the most part, you probably wouldn't. But, you know, and then he... Oh, no! 
Okay, and voila! You know, here is the inked page. So we're at 20 minutes now. So pretty much, uh, first thing I want to do is clean my brush. And actually, let's make this to a part three. Okay, this is Kurokami, and I'm signing off.